our topic for the day, it, 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 we've been getting a lot of questions about starlings and, and uh, feeding suet this time of year when the weather, weather gets cold. And I want to help you um, minimize the impact starlings have on your, your suet feeders because they can be uh, a, a real pass. So what is suet first, real quick? This is pure suet. This is the, the beef uh, fat from cows, the internal body cavity fat, and in particular the kidney fat of cows, uh, and very high in oil and fat, obviously. And it's a great substitute for birds uh, in the winter months for insects. That provides a lot of the nutritional value there. So that's why people like to offer suet. Now, typically, most people offer suet in uh, a formula that there's lots of peanut uh, formulas and fruit formulas and things uh, and, lot, and, and it depends on what your favorite is but no matter what flavor you offer um, they can are all uh, well, they're very attractive to european starlings they're major pests and we've done whole programs on them and their problems that, that they they pose uh, and people really really want to know how to battle them well one advantage that we have that uh, when feeding birds is that the body shape and, and genetics of a, of a starling help us a little bit. Their size, their weight, and their, uh, the weakness in their toes help to keep them from being able to hang upside down for very long. Yes, I know it doesn't completely stop them for those of you who have, who have done this, but it really, really slows starlings down. Where uh, we have lots of different kinds of suet feeders, but an upside down suet feeder, a, a feeder in which the starling, I mean the suet is exposed underneath, and woodpeckers, chickadees, titmice, they'll hang upside down all day long. It doesn't bother them at all. They can eat the suet uh, and, and not even be bothered by it. But a starling, really particular, wants to land on top of the suet, it wants to be able to place to sit and to eat on it. And so taking that away from him, he'll hang upside down, he'll try, and you'll notice he won't be able to hang very long and then he'll drop. And then they'll start poking up there like a hummingbird almost trying to get to the suet. And what that does is that really slows down uh, the impact they can make on a suet cake. If, uh, if you let a flock of starlings at your suet feeder, you know, a lot of times that suet cake's gone in less than a day. Whereas with the, if you uh, suspend it upside down, now, uh, and you've really slowed them down. Now, some people have done for slowing them down is not good enough. They want to totally eliminate starlings. Well, really, the only way I know to do that is with a cage feeder. And caged feeders, you put the suet cages inside, and you have this outer cage that is too small to get inside there. And that, and then the starlings are too small. So, but so are flicking too. Flickers are too big, red bellies are too big, but uh, downies and chickadees and tit mice can get in there and feed. And then you can also, there's a wire grate on the bottom, so those who can hang upside down can access the suet cakes from underneath, and that, that dissuades the starlings. Or you can put in this metal plate, and that totally keeps the starlings from being able to feed from the bottom as well. So it depends on how severe a problem you have. Uh, with starlings, I know some of you haven't had any problems yet this year. Starlings are notorious for coming in when it really, really gets uh, cold and stays cold. January is the big month um, where they really start to invade, but late December too, during these snowstorms and stuff that we, we will probably have, uh, we, you know, they they tend to get worse. And so you can use their weight against them, use their size against them. Um, and, but they, they're they going to try to make an impact on you. So that's a little tip to try to help you to battle or win the starling wars. Um, the other question this week has also been about raccoons and starlings. Our number one advice for raccoons and star, uh, raccoons and suet, sorry, not raccoons and starlings, but raccoons and suet is to use hot pepper suet. Um, they the, Remember, birds don't have the taste buds on their tongues like mammals do, and so... They're not bothered by the hot, hot material, hot, hot peppers, but raccoons and squirrels really can't take it. So a good hot pepper suet cake will end your, your raccoon problem, especially the taking your suet cakes and your suet folders off in the middle of the night. So um, that is a, a, our tip for there. So if you like the videos, give them a like, give them a share, send in ideas for future ones. And until then, happy holidays and come on, let's talk birds.